yeast, one of the four main ingredients in making beer. Also known as Saccharomyces, is responsible for most of the fermentation that takes place in the beer and wine industry. For centuries, brewers thought that fermentation was an act of God. They actually called it God is good. Then one day, this French microbiologist came around and disproved that whole theory. His name was Louis Pasteur. With his microscope, Louis Pasteur discovered that yeast was the culprit for which caused beer and wine to ferment. If you ever heard of the word pasteurization, that was Louis' technique in which he used heat to kill off microbes and pathogens. Taking care of your yeast is one of the most important things you can do to making great beer. If you take care of your yeast, it's gonna ensure that your beer tastes clean and the way you wanted it to. Making a yeast starter is one of the first steps you could take into making better beer. I recommend making a yeast starter three days before your brew day. You may already have some of the equipment needed to make a yeast starter and don't even know it. Here's a list of what you're gonna need to make a yeast starter. This should be obvious, but you're gonna need yeast. Optional, but highly recommended, yeast nutrient, an Erlenmeyer flask, dry malt extract, water, a scale, squirt bottle of sanitizer, tin foil, and optional as well, a funnel. You're gonna to wanna to start off with a scale. Next, you wanna get yourself a clean and rinsed Erlenmeyer flask. There's a variety of sizes of Erlenmeyer flasks, but I highly suggest a 2,000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. A 1,000 milliliter is a little too small for making a yeast starter. When fermentation has taken place in the yeast starter, the croissant is going to rise, and in a 1,000, it's just going to make a mess all over the place. Take your Erlenmeyer flask and put it on the scale and tear it out. An optional piece of equipment is a funnel. It's gonna save you from a world of making a mess. If you're using a funnel, make sure to re-tear out the scale. Now that our scale's at zero, you're gonna to wanna to take your dry malt extract and weigh out 100 grams of dry malt extract. If you made any mess with the dry malt extract, I recommend cleaning it up now. Next, you're gonna to wanna to add one liter of water. If you use the funnel, I recommend rinsing out all the extra dry malt extract that's caught on the funnel. The nice thing about having a scale is if you doubt your visual measurements for the water, you can double check it on the scale. Each gram is equal to one milliliter of water. Now that we weighed out our dry malt extract and water, I'm gonna recommend adding yeast nutrient. The yeast nutrient is gonna make sure the yeast gets a boost of energy and a little bit of food to help it on its journey. For a one liter starter, I recommend adding 0.1 to 0.2 grams of yeast nutrient. Now that we got all of our ingredients in the Erlenmeyer flask, I'm gonna recommend swirling it up and breaking up any big chunks of dry malt extract. All right, so all of our ingredients are in the Erlenmeyer flask. We've broken up any big chunks of dry malt extract. Now it's ready to take it to the stove and boil it for five minutes. During the five minutes, I recommend standing by the Erlenmeyer flask. You do risk the potential of it boiling over and making a mess on your stove. I've done it too many times, so I'm just forewarning you. I want you to make beer without your significant other getting mad at you. After your five minute boil, turn off the stove and place a piece of tin foil on top of the Erlenmeyer flask. Be careful when touching the Erlenmeyer flask because it is extremely hot. I recommend using gloves when you go to do this process. Next, you're going to want to cool down your yeast starter to the pitching temperature of the yeast. You have two methods to cool down your yeast starter. You can use an ice bath or you can put it in your fridge. I found the ice bath method to be the quickest and the fridge method to be the laziest. There's just some days where I can't sit around and wait for something to cool. So I put it in the fridge and I come back to it a couple hours later. Now I'm going to go take this Erlenmeyer flask to my stove, boil it, cool it, and come back and finish the tutorial. Now that we got our yeast starter boiled and waiting for it to cool, I'm gonna take this time to give you a few more tips. Keep a squirt bottle of water on hand while you're watching the boil. If you ever feel that the Erlenmeyer flask is gonna boil over, squirt some water inside and it will stop it. Make sure to use an oven mitt. Don't try to grab the hot Erlenmeyer flask and move it. Use a sanitized thermometer to check up on the temperature of your yeast starter. While you're waiting for it to cool, swirl it up every now and then. It'll help speed up the process. Okay. Now we got our yeast starter down to the pitching temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit. What we're gonna do next is take the squirt bottle of sanitizer water, spray down our yeast package, as well as the lip of the Erlenmeyer flask. Now that we spot sanitize all the pieces that we'll be handling, let's add the yeast. Here's some yeast that I harvested from a previous batch. It's the same as the Y yeast packet over there, so we're gonna add them both to this yeast starter. If you're using harvested yeast, I recommend decanting off the excess liquid on top. For the Y yeast packets, you're gonna to wanna to shake it up, peel the corner, and pour it in. Now they get your yeast added, spot sanitize the tin foil as well as the lip of the Erlenmeyer flask and cover it up. You wanna leave the tin foil loose enough on the top where oxygen can still get in and out of the Erlenmeyer flask. Next thing, swirl it up. Get as much oxygen in it as you can. I'm gonna recommend you swirl up your yeast starter a couple times throughout the day. Put your yeast starter in an area of the house where you're gonna walk by it a lot. 
That way you can monitor the fermentation as well as swirl it up and add oxygen to it anytime you're going to walk by. If you have a stir plate, that's the most optimal way to have oxygen constantly delivered to your yeast starter. Take a sanitized stir bar, throw it in your Erlenmeyer flask, and set it on your stir plate. After 48 hours, fermentation should be complete. Take the yeast starter and place it in the fridge until brew day. On brew day, take the yeast starter out the fridge in the morning and let it warm up to room temperature. When you're ready to add the yeast, decant off the excess liquid on top of the yeast, swirl it up, and add it to your fermenter. So that's it. That's how you make a yeast starter. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and click subscribe. Don't forget to follow Armada Brewing on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's how you'll stay up to date with all the newest episodes of School of Hops.